Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. We're watching a clip of Undisputed with none other than Skip Bayless and Keyshawn Johnson. And um, we're talking about Dak Prescott. Apparently, it's been reported that the extension for Dak Prescott is far from guaranteed. Um, and now the whole question is, is will they, you know, will the Cowboys, um, have Dak play on the final year of his contract? You know, would they just let him play then walk, um, is the real question, um, and get nothing in return, or are they going to maybe try to trade him and Dak would have to, uh, waive his no trade clause. There's a few options. Technically, I guess it all depends on what Dak Prescott wants. You know, is he trying to maximize money? Does he just want to play with for Dallas? Is he happy with Dallas? Has he built his life in Dallas? He loves the community. He loves, you know, he feels comfortable there. He loves Jerry. Or does he want to win a championship? And, you know, who knows, honestly. Um, or the Cowboys just over. They're just like, we are done. We cannot win with this guy. He's not good enough. Really fascinating. I want to hear what they have to say, and then we can break it down from there. In Dak Prescott's contract. Now, Dak cannot be franchise tagged. He also has a no trade clause. So, Keyshawn, could this mean that Jerry will bite that bullet and let Dak play out the final year of his contract at a massive $59.5 million? I think it would be foolish if they were to do such a thing, especially if you are all in, like you said, at the end of the season when you got bounced to the playoffs, that you're coming back. Yep. All in. Mm -hmm. So if you you are going to resign or try to extend, better yet, C.D. Lamb and Michael Parsons, I would think that you would need some cap relief to have a guy play on a sixty million dollar yep. cap number, which his base salary I think is close to thirty million. So it's a thirty million dollar real number of cash, but a sixty million dollar round up yeah, number to the salary cap. If you want that to happen, you probably are going to struggle to be able to sign players or retain your own players, extend players that are going to want money. Yeah. CeeDee Lamb is not looking to go into 2024 in September playing in, in hopes of getting an extension after the season. And I'm sure Michael Parsons isn't either. Guys, one thing that they want, they want the damn money, Skip. And they want <laughs> it early. They don't want to have to wait. Yeah. So when you look at that, sure. if the Cowboys are smart. They can restructure Dak Prescott's deal and get themselves about $18, $19 million of relief sure. by just doing a simple restructuring without extending. Okay, but the downside is you're on the hook for three or four more years. If you extend it, mm -hmm. yes. But you could just simply take the $59 plus million plus of cap space, restructure it, turn it into signing bonus. Mm -hmm. So now you're guaranteeing, you're already guaranteeing a 30. Now take and put whatever else on top of it, another 18. So you basically giving him $48 million of real cash. Are you willing okay. to do that? Okay, but, but if you let him walk next year, okay, after this season, you let him walk, your ass is going to be in trouble mm. because you got to be able to replace him. Yeah. And if you replace him with a Trey Lance or a Cooper Rush, or maybe there's somebody out maybe. there that are not thinking about in free agency 2025 that I'm not thinking about right now that you may be able to sign for less money. You're not going to get the same guy. On top of that, what Dallas Cowboy quarterback has ever left the building without finishing their career as a Dallas Cowboy? And I'm talking about the ones that we talk about. Mm -hmm. The Roger Starbacks of the world. Well, the cares? Uh, uh, years ago. Troy Aikens, yeah. the Romos. Those matters. are the ones I'm talking about. And even though he hasn't won a championship, when you talk about quarterbacks of the Dallas Cowboys, his name is mentioned as hard as it may feel to you, Skip. Mm -hmm. It's still mentioned with those guys yeah, that won championships. So I don't necessarily see Cowboys letting their guy walk out the building next season when this year is over with and he becomes a the unrestricted free agent because they can't tag him. So he walks out the building. Are you, you willing to are you willing to do that? So this idea that this is what the Cowboys did, Troy Aikman, Roma, like that doesn't matter. That that just doesn't matter. This I that's so silly that Dak Prescott has to retire a cowboy. Like that's such a head scratcher. Like that just like this idea that again, what you did 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I mean it does not matter okay it does not matter michael jordan played with the wizards 
LeBron James hopped around all over teams. Tom Brady retired as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, or I don't know, did he technically sign with the Patriots to be able to retire? I, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying. He retired as, you know, a Buck. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. So this idea that there's no, that these other quarterbacks haven't done that, it just doesn't mean anything. It truly doesn't mean anything. Um, so I'm just going to throw that argument out the door. Um, in terms of letting him walk for nothing, this is where, to me, it's a little weird because you're not letting him walk for nothing because you paid him for what he did for the years past, okay? So he's not walking for nothing. You paid him for a service. He did that service, and now he's gone, right? It's like paying some guy to, like, paint your house. And you're like, I paid this guy, and now, you know, he left. You're like, you're just letting him walk away for, for nothing? And it's like, no, he, he painted my house. Look, my house is, is clean now or is, you know, nice and looks nice. And to me, so this, this idea that you're, you're not going to get anything from, because he has a no trade clause. If you can extend him and restructure it where now he has a, where there is no trade clause, there is no, no trade clause. And then you'll be able to trade him. That to me is more interesting. But if you have to sign, excuse me, if you have to sign him again, got the hiccups. I always get the hiccups because I breathe in so much. But so when you have this, when when you sign someone and you say, let's say we're going to extend him for three years, we're right? making up numbers here for another three years. Um, and there's a no, no trade, there's a no trade clause. Then you have to just say, okay, we're going to continue to go all in behind Dak. And unless you get a great deal on Dak, where he's going to take a hometown discount, then you're, you're not letting him walk with nothing because what are the other options in signing him and then trying to trade him? But he has to be willing then to say, okay, I'm okay with no trade calls with a no, no trade calls, you know? And I, I don't know if, if, if he is, he obviously wasn't before and the Cowboys accepted it. And I don't know if now Dak feels like he doesn't have that ability anymore. Maybe he had that ability before because there was still more of this, like, Hey, I'm amazing and I'm going to be amazing. And now it seems like that kind of, you know, aura has kind of faded behind Dak now a little bit. People are starting to be like, well, is Dak a winner? And so I don't know now if he has the ability to say, to, you know, to demand. I don't know what Dak can demand in these situations. Maybe he says, look around, man. You're going to go draft another quarterback? It's going to take you years to be able to get that quarterback as good as me. And who do you want? Kirk Cousins? Go ahead. He just tore his Achilles. You want Russell Wilson? Go ahead. Go get Russell Wilson. Baker Mayfield? Have at it. He's looking around and saying, Listen, guys, it's me or no one. What else do you want? You don't have the number one pick. You're not drafting Caleb Williams. So what are you going to do, Jerry? I could see Dak being like that. I'm not saying that's how exactly he's going to talk. But at the same time, it's like the Cowboys are in this weird situation. Because there's no other quarterbacks. There's no available quarterbacks that I would want. That I would say go out and get over Dak. Your best bet is drafting a quarterback. And now the problem is, is in order to draft a quarterback... You either have to just get rid of everything and somehow trade up and get a great pick, which is easier said than done, or you have to be terrible the next season and draft high up. And if that's the case, you're probably not going to be that terrible with a Dak Prescott. So the way is, the way how I would kind of approach this is I would try to figure out if there's any market for Dak and at what price, and then I would try to figure out if there is a way to extend Dak and then trade him. Um, four picks, you're pretty much going to then punt the next season. Maybe you throw Trey Lance out there and say, all right, Trey, let's see what you got. But I, you know, I don't know. I, it depends on how bad Trey is, or maybe Trey's good enough. I mean, I really have no idea how you evaluate Trey Lance at this point. I really don't. And you know, anyone who does, they're lying. Um, and then you, and then if you're not good and you punt the next season, which sucks because you're wasting years with Micah and, you know, other people. And, and listen, they're not going to be happy about that. In fact, they're going to be furious. But when you give them a whole bucket of money and say, well, here you go. But again, even the problem with that plan is, is like, uh, not to my knowledge, there, I don't think there's another Caleb Williams. And even Caleb Williams isn't just going to start at the jump. The problem is, is like, unless you find another Patrick Mahomes, you know, like I'm trying to think of another quarterback. I mean, CJ Stroud popped pretty quickly. You know, good quarterbacks do tend to pop more quickly. But again, this is where it's an uneven timeline for, say, a Micah um, or Diggs or any of these other key players, CD Lamb, 
because by the time you maybe get that quarterback, because first of all, if you also have to draft the right quarterback, that's easier said than done. Go ask the Panthers. Um, you draft the you draft the quarterback, and let's say he is really good. You have to really hope that he is CJ Stroud. And even with that said, let's say he is a CJ Stroud, it still will take a few years, two two years or so, for them to really get comfortable. Because you're just not you're not expecting CJ Stroud to lead the Texans to a Super Bowl in the next two years. It's just not unlikely. And in fact, if he led them to a Super Bowl next season, people would be like, "This is insane." This is absolutely insane. We've never really seen a run like this before. Very rare. This is amazing. Oh my God. Is he the next? Is he the next Patrick Mahomes? Is he going to surpass Patrick Mahomes? Like that's how crazy people would get. If the Texans hit the ground running and get to the Super Bowl, people would say, we've been talking about Patrick Mahomes. You know, maybe CJ Stroud is now going to catch up and pass Patrick Mahomes and pass Tom Brady. They would just be going crazy. So you have to then draft essentially another once in a lifetime quarterback to get that level of success. Otherwise, it's going to be maybe like a Jordan Love situation, maybe a Jalen Hurt situation where like he wasn't that good and then he was really good and then kind of rocky. You just you just don't know. It's just it's not always that instant success. And then now by the time maybe you get things going, CeeDee Lamb is older, Diggs is older, Michael Parsons is older, right? You don't even know who the heck the coach is right now. McCarthy, are you going to continue getting McCarthy and then you're going to draft a new quarterback? with a coach that's McCarthy and now you're going to say, Hey, develop this brand new quarterback. It's like, that's just messy. So really the easiest thing to do is to, to get Dak to resign and convince him to take that discount to say, you gotta take less money. Do you want to win? Yes or no? Yes, no, yes, no. And if the answer is yes, we got to get less money. You got to get less money and we are going, these are the players that we're going to get. We are proving this to you. We're not going to make you take less money only to not get you talent. But do you want this guy? Do you want this guy? Do you want this guy? Granted, they can't get Mike Evans now, but like they were like, we could have gotten, we can get Mike Evans. Do you know how amazing you're going to be? You are going to be an MVP. You are going to have Evans, CD, like you are going to be unstoppable. Okay. And our defense is going to continue to get you great field position. And we are going to run the NFC East and we are going to run the 49ers out of town and we are getting to the Super Bowl. You do all of that, you know, then you're maybe selling something on him. But otherwise, if he's like, nah, man, I just want my money. Well, I don't really know what you do in that situation. I, re I really, really don't. Um, I want to see what uh, Skip has to say. And then after go. you groomed, drafted, brought him up, raised him, made him, turned him into what he is? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that for somebody else? That doesn't make a whole lot of damn sense. Mm. Why would you do it? Okay, my turn. I'm on record as saying I have seen enough of Dak Prescott. <laughs> All I know is my goals are higher than losing a playoff game, and, and winning the division and losing a playoff game. I have seen him three straight times in big playoff games, home against San Francisco, at San Francisco, home against Green Bay, stink in all three games. Shockingly stink, where he just looked overmatched. He looked overwhelmed by the... They the, all the, looked. The, sort of the hugeness of they the all, situation, they looked, right? Though. They all now, looked overwhelmed. Okay, but in the second quarter against Green Bay, he threw two, uh, late first quarter, and then second quarter, he throws, throws a pick six. And he it's did. 27 to nothing <laughs> before halftime. I've never seen anything like it before. At some point, you have to reorder priorities and say, well, do, do we want to go win a Super Bowl or do we just want to maybe steal the division? Do we want to win 12 games for three straight years? Because that's what they did and they have zero to show for it, as you well know. If your goal is to get back to the, your first NFC Championship game in 29 years, get back to your first Super Bowl in however many, 30 plus years. So I told you, I have seen enough and I have seen the 49ers say, Jimmy G, that's not enough. He was up 20 to 10 mid fourth quarter, and they just said, you know what? We can do bit. This is a Super Bowl, 20 to 10 in the Super Bowl. And they just said, he's not good enough for, to, for us to achieve our goals. And they go out and spend three first round picks and a second round pick, third round pick, I guess it was, to go get Trey Lance. Yes. And then. How did that work out? Okay. Well, we never know. We, we don't know how that worked how, out. It, it, it because, didn't work out the way they wanted to. Skip because because somebody fell me. into their lap with the but, last pick in the draft named Brock Purdy. You want to talk about hitting the lottery? That has never happened. So, so you're... Well, you got to look at it 
Um, the better example is what Andy Reid did with Alex Smith. Alex Smith is a great quarterback. They were winning. They were making the playoffs. Wasn't good enough. And they said, we got to go out and get a quarterback. They went out and got Patrick Mahomes. And now look at that. You know, they're considered to be one of the best teams in the history of the NFL. And also look at Jared Goff and the the Rams. They said, you know, Sean McVay said, not good enough. We got to go out and get someone who can win now with this roster. They went out, traded him, got Stafford, boom, won a Super Bowl. That's Those are the things you got to do. And those are the things that the Cowboys are unwilling to do because they're afraid to fail. They're afraid to be irrelevant. They're afraid to make that mistake. Um, And that's, you can't, that's not the way how you're going to be able to win. You got to take big swings. You got to let go of the Alex Smiths of the world, who are great quarterbacks, who you know your team is in good hands. You know you can trust. But they're not Patrick Mahomes. Okay. As good as Goff is, he's not Stafford. Stafford won that Super Bowl with the Rams. Make no mistake about it. Jared Goff was not good enough at that moment to do that. He was not good enough to, to really step up big in that Super Bowl, to step up big against uh, the, the Bucks in the playoffs. Stafford was elite. He was Hall of Fame level. Whether you want to say he's a Hall of Famer or not, he played like a Hall of Famer that stretch. Okay, He did what needed to be done. He did what Goff had shown unable to do at that moment in time. Patrick Mahomes can obviously do what Alex Smith cannot do. Okay? Those are the differences. So, and again, it's easier said than done. It's easier to say, well, just go get a Patrick Mahomes or go make a big play. But the Cowboys, they could have maybe tried to make a play for uh, Aaron Rodgers when he was available. I mean, who says they couldn't? They could have made a big play to try to get Stafford. I mean, it's too late now and the times didn't match up when you were looking at Dak, you were like, oh, the, the, you know, the future is bright with this kid, but they could have done some of these things and they didn't, they just didn't, you know, they could be making these other moves, but they don't. Okay. Their biggest move right now is getting Trey Lance. And it's like, I don't know, maybe Trey Lance ends up being something, but you know, who really knows? So this is without a doubt on the Cowboys um or the organization as a whole and this is also the problem my last point is this is the problem with mccarthy because who knows what mccarthy is saying to jones is he saying i can win with dak dak is great we can do this we can do this or is he going to him and saying dak is not good enough we need another quarterback and i don't know if jerry jones listens to him because the thing is that when sean McVay says we need a quarterback they go out and get a quarterback when andy reed says we need a quarterback they go get a quarterback okay when the great coaches say, we need a quarterback, when Shanahan says, we need someone better than um, Jimmy Garoppolo, they go out and make moves. You can trust an elite offensive head coach that when they say, I cannot win with this quarterback, we need another quarterback. Sean Payton says, Russell Wilson, not good enough. Get rid of him. Take that dead money hit. And they do it. And you know that you can trust. And you know what? If, it, if you end up drafting the wrong player or it ends up not working out within the next few years, you at least know that it was the smart decision and you went with the smart person, okay? You're not always right. You may be right, but the outcome may not always be right. There are plenty of times that you personally have made a great decision. It was the smartest decision. It was the best decision based on the evidence and the information you had in that moment. And you know what? It ended up being a disaster, okay? You either lost money, had your heart broken, said something that you shouldn't have said that ruined a relationship with your family, friends, job, whatever. But in that moment, it was the smartest, best thing that you could do for yourself and ended up being wrong. That doesn't mean that it was the wrong decision. And that's where the Cowboys are right now. And they can't trust their own organization to evaluate where they are. Mike Mark McCarthy goes in there and says, Dak Prescott's great. I don't know if you can trust that. Because then it's like, well, then why didn't you win? Then it's on you, Mike. Are you a good coach? Yes or no? And, it, and if he says, Dak Prescott's not a good, not a good enough. We need to get another one. The question is, well, I don't know, Mike. Can I trust you? Are you a good coach? If I switched you out and had Andy Reid here, would we be winning the Super Bowls? If we had Sean Payne, like, like, why didn't they go out and get Sean Payne? The Cowboys could have made a play at Sean Payne. Sean Payne wanted to coach again. Obviously, the Broncos didn't do it. They could have gotten Harbaugh, didn't do it. The Cowboys could have done clear things to improve their team, and they don't do it. That's an organizational 
issue. Just is. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really really, really, really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. It's one of the best ways you can support me because it really just helps with the visibility. And I would just so much appreciate it. Thank you so much and see you next time.